Hello, my name is Sheila. In the past few months I've gotten to know some of the YouTube community. One young man decided to switch the focus of his channel to paranormal subjects. There's nothing wrong with that. The more this subject is discussed, it is brought into the open, and helps to bring more knowledge and understanding to what was once considered taboo. One night I tuned into my new friend's live stream and he was operating a EVP, which stands for a Electronic Voice Phenomena Recorder. Sounds found on electronic recordings that are interpreted as spirit voices that have been either unintentionally recorded or intentionally requested and recorded to have a dialogue with the spirits who have passed on. Needless to say I was freaked out by what I saw my friend doing with a EVP. I asked him if he'd used any prayers or anything else for protection from dark spirits. I don't know if he saw my question because his chat was scrolling too fast to keep up. I asked if he had salt and he said no. This is not good. So that's how this video came to be made. My plan was to have this video finished and uploaded last week. I was sidelined by my health, plus this video keeps getting longer because I want to be as thorough and clear as I can be in pointing out the dangers of using tools to contact spirits. One thing I want to make perfectly clear. When using a spirit box or Ouija board, even if you get no response, you've opened a door for any spirit, good or bad. And if you don't close the door after each session, you will be visited. You have left the light on, and it's like a beacon of light inviting anything to come into your personal space. There is a good reason why the word, goodbye is on a Ouija board. I started looking at videos on YouTube, and one channel kept showing up in my searches called Huff Paranormal, created by Steve Huff. He has 195,287 subscribers. He claims he has the cutting edge of real spirit communication research. Also, his spirit boxes were featured on TLC's Paranormal Lockdown TV series. His physical appearance reminds one of Anton LaVey the founder of the Church of Satan. Steve said he's spent the last seven years building spirit boxes. And he's selling them for outrageous prices on Amazon and eBay. I'm all for capitalism, but he's only spending 20 bucks on old radios, and parts that were probably found in a dumpster. So he puts odds and ends on the old radios, makes a new contraption and sells it for just under $1,000 for the basic model of his spirit box. The fancier models which offer clearer vocals from the spirit world can cost thousands of dollars. What a scammer. The latest news from Huff Paranormal is Steve and his family are under attack by demons, and their boss Satan. Steve then reached out to Josh Louie from Hope Paranormal, who promptly flew to Steve's house to banish the evil entities. I'm not going into detail about what happened during their efforts to rid all spirits from the property. They both documented the events on video and you can watch it on both their YouTube channels. Steve Huff then released a short video about how he supposedly destroyed all the spirit boxes, in particular his gold model, which he smashed with a sledgehammer. That was a huge mistake. That is not how to remove dark spirits that may be attached to an object. I'll explain the steps to rid objects of entities later on in this video. Needless to say, Steve still has dark entities. But it has been reported that Steve Huff didn't destroy his spirit boxes, instead he's selling them on eBay. And, he's going to build more spirit boxes to help grieving people connect to their loved ones in the spirit afterlife. Steve hasn't realized he's being manipulated by the father of all liars. I wrote him a lengthy response, which I'm also sharing with the viewers of this video. I'm a 64-year-old psychic and a demonologist. I stumbled upon your YouTube channel a few weeks ago doing research on my newest video. I was glad to see you'd given up your spirit box because you and your family were attacked by dark entities. My first impulse was going to be contacting you, and hopefully convince you to pull your videos about the spirit boxes, 
because too many people are playing with fire by emulating your sessions with unknown entities. This is highly irresponsible on your part. Now I see you're being pulled back into using spirit boxes to help your subscribers connect to their loved ones who have passed on. You are being used by the father of liars to recruit more souls to be harmed by Satan and his demons. What you've experienced before by the dark entities is just a drop in the bucket of what's waiting for you if you insist on playing with fire. The very first Ouija boards were made from the wood of coffins. A coffin nail in the center of the planchette window served as the pointer. An Ouija board can be a useful spiritual tool to glean information from the spirit realm. With practice, this mystical divination tool can help you open the doors to your own natural psychic ability. Most who use an Ouija board, do not take it seriously. But, if you are serious about learning how to communicate with spirits through the Ouija board, I strongly advise you to seek guidance from a person who knows how to use one the right way. Although being mass manufactured as such, the Ouija board is not a toy. Before this so called game became popular, it was used by those who conducted seances in their homes. It was first constructed by painting or carving the letters and symbols onto a wooden table, and covering it with a tablecloth when it was not in use. Others would hand sew the letters and numbers on a handkerchief and discreetly fold it and tuck it away in a private place. Are you wondering if there are dangers in using an Ouija board? Yes, there is. Information that you get should not be taken too seriously. Don't ask questions like when am I going to die or should I quit my job or is my husband cheating on me? Don't ask legal or medical advice. If you have questions of this nature, ask about the outcome of the given situation. But take all messages and advice with a big grain of salt. Always work with positive energy. You are opening a door for spirits to enter your home. Positive and white light energy attracts the same energy in the spirit world. You may get more than you bargain for, if your intention is to be scared by asking questions about dark subjects. Devils, demons, hell, etc. Always work with a mature group of adults. If things start to go off track, call it a night. Always remember you opened a door to the spirit world, and you must close it when you're finished using a Ouija board. I don't believe in allowing kids to use an Ouija board. I hope you would never consider giving one as a gift to someone else's child. That is a choice that only a parent should make. This isn't a toy. If your child wants to use the board, make sure he or she uses it with you, or an adult whose judgment you trust. If you have a curiosity about the Ouija board or spirit box, and have hesitated because you do not know what the outcome of using these items would be, here are a few tips for safe use. Light a white candle. You'll need sea salt. It's used for protection from negativity and darker spirits. Have extra sea salt handy in case the circle is broken. Cast a protective circle using sea salt around the area you'll be in while using either the Ouija board or spirit box. The circle should be big enough to protect all participants. Some people believe that a prayer is a good protection before a session. Ask for a helpful and positive spirit to assist you on this night. Participants should take a moment to relax and ground their energy. Ask questions from a place of honesty, integrity and respect for the spirit world. Make it clear prior to use, who you wish to speak with. If you are willy-nilly about it, anyone or anything will take up the invitation to come through. Always call spirits, of whom you are searching for, by their given name or nickname. Just keep in mind. Most women are known to someone as mom. Messages can come in other forms than just words. You may feel, smell or taste the messages. Make sure you make note of that. It is often the signature of a spirit. Don't let it scare you. It is just another way they try to reach you. Not everyone will experience these extra messages, which is why you should share it with everyone. Remember to close the doorway when your session ends. Thank your spirit helpers for their guidance. Send them on their way with a blessing. Announce aloud in a firm voice this session is ended and this doorway is now closed. 
feel free to say a prayer or ask for a blessing from God or Goddess, Angels, Spirit Guides etc. and then close your circle. Smudging is the Native American version of a smoke bath and is used to cleanse and purify negative and residual energy. Do this after each session, just as a precautionary measure. Ouija boards and spirit boxes are not a suitable or appropriate gift for children or unsupervised teens, especially when they are not your own kids. Demons are amorphous beings, or as they should be called, the demons, most likely are currents of electric plasma, this is our fourth state of matter. They are in themselves, slow moving, but are hyper intelligent and have the ability of mind control and psychokinesis. Since they don't have any fixed form they instead use their intellect, they develop long term plans to achieve their different goals. Other species are used as their tools to act out with. They do not consume any kind of physical food, but feed upon the excessive emotional energy emitted by humans, and any other species that are in a state of stress. It is particularly the emotions of strong fear or hate that the demons like to engulf. This is why the demons deliberately create an environment on Earth, and other planets, that is as much traumatizing as possible. They set different people up to fight each other creating conflicts and raging wars. Demonic Communication The demons travel and influence people through all kinds of energetic threads. By this large network, they can reach almost everywhere and affect virtually everybody. It is said that when a person is in contact with one of these threads, the demon can more easily take control of him or her. The energetic threads has without any question been identified as the telecommunications network. This includes the internet and the cellular or mobile network. However, humans and other species have some kind of natural protection against intrusion. But this specific shelter can be inactivated by the individual when he or she literally invites the devil. When somebody invites an evil character of some kind, and gives it clearance. A portal is opened into the mind of the person. A portal can be any number of things, the most common of course is another person who is influenced by the demons. But a portal can also be a communication device of another kind. By communication device I specifically refer to all different varieties of oracles such as, tarot cards, the I Ching, Nordic runes, Ouija boards, talking tables and many other forms of fortune telling. Even channeling, automatic writing, reversed speech and white noise in radio or TV are believed to be favorable means of communication that the demons are using on humans. All these tools are considered to be extremely dangerous to use. This is not a threat that one should take lightly. The tools are not evil in themselves, in a perfect world they might very well be used as means of communicating more easily with the higher self or with the universal God, but this is not a perfect world and all should remember this. Until you know more about these demons, you simply must not use oracles without proper training and protection. How the Demonic Influence Humans Any person with low self-esteem is susceptible to attacks from demons. When you don't think highly of yourself and the things you do, you are likely to let somebody else run things. This is a golden opportunity for a daemon to sneak in and mess things up. A person can either be possessed in the real meaning of the word, or he or she can be controlled by different controlling mechanisms, some of them already mentioned as different oracles. When somebody is not balanced in body and mind, when he hasn't dealt with all the dark sides of his being, then a division in the personality might take place. This is undesirable and dangerous because the person is only aware of one personality aspect at a time. Therefore, when the dark personality is active, the person is entirely controlled by the demon. In this state, the demon can act out at will, and seriously hurt other people. A demon, possessing another body does not have to be in physical contact with the person he wishes to hurt. All the demon needs is a personal connection to his victim. This can certainly create lots of sensible and difficult situations, because the demonic influence might come from one of your personal friends. So, 
When suspecting a demonic influence, there are certain steps you have to take and you must use extreme caution in this process. First of all, confirm there really is a demonic activity present. Look for these warning signs. You are affected by instant depression, suddenly you feel that nothing you do is any fun, not even things you normally enjoy doing. You get restless and just walk about, anxiously. You don't get peace until you call a certain person or consult a certain oracle. You are forced to consult a certain oracle slash person against your own wish. You are not allowed to end a consultation slash meeting when you wish to do so. You are told you are a chosen one and therefore must carry extra burdens. You are constantly told what you did badly, not what you did well. You are deliberately misled because it is a useful lesson. You are affected by bad luck that doesn't seem to be karmic in nature. Electronic equipment causes trouble or fail. Light bulbs explode violently. What to do? If you truly suspect and have good grounds believing that a person you know are hurting you in a demonic way you must end the relationship. You must of course check things thoroughly so that you don't accuse somebody innocent. When you are sure enough you must cut all bonds to this person, change your phone number, change your job too if necessary. The demonic person will attack you to get you back but you must firmly resist. The same thing applies to demonic portals in the form of different oracles, channeling, reversed speech and the likes. You simply have to stop using this way of communication. Since there is often a lifestyle attached to this behavior it can be a severe task. Consider it an addiction as with alcohol or drugs, there will certainly be relapses when you think you're cured. After two years it will be easier to resist but the threat will surely remain. It has also come to my attention that there are several other ways or channels for a daemon to enter the human psyche. When we add a contact and phone number to our cell phones, we may in fact have created a demonic portal. This happens if the person we added is a carrier of a demon. Nowadays, we literally have to test every contact that gains access to our lives. You have to pay attention even to email addresses and different forms of chat services like Facebook, Twitter, ICQ, MSN, Messenger, etc. Also, be aware of speech recognition programs such as the one you get access to when using Windows 7 and higher. This program seems to suggest words and phrases when listening to sounds in the room or area through the computer microphone. Other, more playful programs simply scramble a set of text phrases or parts of phrases to create new and random sentences. Do not play around with these programs. Every program that mimics communication of any kind can be used by demons to influence you in a subtle way, charming at first, later stepping up to a hellish frenzy. Never forget that demons can read your mind, they know all of your soft spots. If things are really bad in your life and you suspect demons to constantly draining you of energy, this is my advice. Get yourself an old-time phone book. Physically write down all of your contacts, their phone number and email. Then start erasing digital contacts, on every cell phone you have, on every computer and laptop. Do not forget saved numbers in landline phones. Erasing contacts only are not enough, you have to clear recently called numbers and logs. Same thing with SMS messages, you have to erase received sent and saved. Also, all email that exists in every one of your email clients must be done away with. Print the ones you need to save. Get a new lifestyle of always keeping your digital devices clean. Inconvenient, yes, but you will get a much better life. The demons are slow in motion but are highly intelligent and use the strongest factor they know of, time. They also have a strategy of creating opposition between different groups or units in society, children are in dispute with their parents, men quarrel with women, right-wing ideologies stands against left-wing ideologies and nations make war against nations. Mankind has come to think of this foul system as the law of nature.
the devil and demonic filters. In later years, the demons seem to have crossed a holy border, they now act in the place of, and with the voice of God and the angels. This is a horrific crime and a humiliation of all that is good in life. The Lord of the demons have come forth and declared himself to be God Almighty. This supreme but shrewd being is not someone you should get acquainted with, please take my word for it, he will charm you, ensnare you and then he will kill you. Is it then possible to somehow block or restrict the demons from accessing the human mind? There just might be, but this undertaking is of course coupled with great risks. Suppose you created an electronic filter that had the ability of jamming or blocking out the demons, how would you test it? Maybe the demons would simply act as if they were locked out, but later on, perhaps several hundred years later, they would return to attack you. But since the demons are beings of electric plasma currents, it just might be possible to block them out using a Faraday cage. Remember the tales of the Ark of the Covenant, this box was covered inside and out with a layer of gold, thus creating a shielded environment. The content of the Ark presumably was some kind of communication device with which you could talk to God, and it needed to be protected from demons. The wisest thing to do, at this moment, is to avoid the portals, oracles and possessed people, and thereby make it much harder for the demons to do harm. A specific warning must be placed on random number generators, these electronic or mechanic devices are the key elements in creating artificial intelligence. By all means, do not make experiments in this field, because sooner or later, the devil will have himself a deadly tool. The UFO Connection Some information point in the direction of the demonic activities as being part of an extraterrestrial presence. It is believed that the elongated cigar-shaped or cylindrical vessels seen floating in the skies might be connected to the demons. This particular type of UFO vessel has been seen from time to time as far back in time as anyone can remember. These ships are not believed to be manned, they are merely a form of observation centrals. It is not likely that the cylindrical vessels are built by demons, instead they are believed to be constructed by one or more alien groups. These aliens are probably altogether controlled by some kind of mind manipulation, it's a bit like the Borgs in Star Trek, cyborgs, carrying out not their own will, but the will of the ETs. Creating Opposition the plan of controlling mankind that has been pinned on the reptilian race is most certainly a demon plan that has been in the works for thousands of years. The reptilians are known for their great strength, agility and to say the least, their impulsiveness. The reptilian way is to get things done now, don't you find it strange that they would involve themselves with long-range plans stretching down nearly to the birth of a specific planet? Why have the reptilians been targeted in recent years? hung out to be the root of all evil. This is probably the latest agenda being played by the demons, since the reptilian DNA is more or less evenly spread among the human population, the demons is creating another division factor on earth. It will furthermore establish a common enemy that mankind can turn against when the planet Nibiru arrives, and extraterrestrials appear. Possessed Possessions Damon Dolls Haunted Objects You never know what you bring home with you from an antique store or yard sale. Learn how to break the ghostly bond with your possessions. We've all heard the stories about demon dolls and other haunted objects. In most cases, a family member buys an antique that just happens to have something paranormal attached to it. Now, you have to think twice about that item you buy from eBay.
the cursed doll and haunted objects come in two general versions. 1. They absorb the energy of their previous owner. 2. They're cursed by a magical ritual. Haunted objects can be anything. The most common possessed possessions include Dolls Jewelry Antique bed frames and headboards Paintings, especially self-portraits Mirrors Clothing, especially gowns Chairs It's obvious why these objects absorb energy. They either have a great deal of contact with their owner such as jewelry, or they capture the image of the owner in their mirrors. An untimely death could also give the energy to charge the object. For example, a bride who dies on her wedding night could definitely charge her gown and wedding ring with enough essence to become haunted. Always ask about the item's history before buying it. If needed, you could ask a psychic, gifted with psychometry, to test the objects before you bring them home. The psychic can pick up the vibes on the object and tell you if it's good or bad energy. If you experience any ghostly activities, we strongly recommend you call someone to test the object right away. Many objects remain dormant until there's a change in its environment. Usually, that means a new owner takes it to a new home, or you move into someone's home. That change in energy can activate the object. If you do have a haunted object, the following ghostly activities happen. Your possessions move on their own, not necessarily the haunted object. Apparitions and shadow people manifest. Nightmares become frequent, three times a week or more. Bad luck happens around the home, minor injuries or plumbing and electrical problems. Illnesses become more frequent like colds, flu and food poisoning. The timing varies on these activities. Usually, they start within the first two weeks, but it can happen on the anniversary of the previous owner's death. Haunted Object Solutions There are five ways to break the bond with the haunted object. Spiritual Cleansing of the Object and Home Cleanse the object with salt. Return it to its original place. Bury it in a graveyard. Or you can burn it. Burning always works, but then you've lost your money. Plus, you could burn down the block, so what I'm saying is, don't burn anything. I recommend using salt cleansing and spiritual cleansing before doing anything too drastic. Burning is a last resort. If the object continues to appear at your home and you've tried the first four solutions, then seek a paranormal specialist to burn it for you. Destroying a haunted object can cause the evil attached to it to jump out. If you haven't mastered protection techniques, it could attach to you or someone who was at the place you burned it. Then, you'll definitely need a pro to destroy the object, break the attachment and clear your home. You should never smash a haunted object and break it into pieces. When you do that to a haunted object, instead of one portal, you've now created a door from every fragment. This is especially true for mirrors. Whenever you cleanse objects with salt, it has to be sea salt or kosher salt. Which is sea salt that's been blessed by a Jewish rabbi. Ever since human beings became aware of their own image, there has been fascination and fear of reflective surfaces. Folklore and legend have hundreds of stories relating to magic and haunted mirrors. Most, needless to say, tend to be warnings about the dangers of mirrors having negative, supernatural qualities. In relation to this, mirrors are believed by many to be portals to the spirit realm and even other dimensions. Below is a few of the beliefs about mirrors that have been around for hundreds of years. Mirrors have the ability to suck out souls. To avoid this happening mirrors were removed from the room where an ill or dying person lay. The reason being, they were thought to be more vulnerable to the negative power of a mirror. People were warned never to look into a mirror at night or by candlelight. If you did, you would be certain to see ghosts, demons and portents of death, even your own. 
when a person died in a room the mirrors had to be covered or turned to face the wall. President Abraham Lincoln was buried according to the rituals of the Victorian era, in which he lived. His wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, borrowed heavily from the funeral plans Queen Victoria had made for Prince Albert, when he had died five years prior to Lincoln's assassination. Here is a description of the funeral decor of President Lincoln, lying in state at the White House. When viewers entered the East Room, they saw a large, dim chamber heavily draped in mourning. The cornices and mirrors were covered with black alpaca. The middle of the mirrors were covered with white crepe. Black crepe curtains were hung at each window. The catafalque was covered with black cloth, and the inside of the top was fluted with white silk. I could not help contrasting this somber scene with the last gala public reception held by the Lincolns, wrote a reporter for a local newspaper. Failure to do so would result in the deceased person's soul being lost, or they may even turn into a vampire. Even while asleep, it was thought best to cover your mirror as you could be vulnerable to attack from negative spirits or demons during the dark hours. It was also advised to never place your bed in a place where it is reflected in a mirror. In order to prevent mirrors being used as a portal by supernatural entities, the mirror should be frequently moved to different areas of the room. Mirrors with a solid backing placed in the same position for a long period of time, are thought to be more likely to become spiritual portals. So what kind of experiences have people had with mirrors? There are hundreds of documented cases of haunted mirrors and they tend to have similar characteristics. People have reported paranormal experiences when an old mirror brought into the home from somewhere else. People, when moving into a new home, have had problems with mirrors left behind by the previous occupants. People have reported paranormal activity after using mirrors for divination slash scrying. Usually no protection was used by the participants and it is thought that they may have created a portal. It's suggested that when carrying out any kind of spiritual work with mirrors to use a cleansing and protective ritual, if you are doing spiritual work that doesn't involve a mirror or other scrying device, then these should either be covered or put away in a safe place. It has also been observed that using a Ouija board can also create portals. Mirrors nearby are often claimed to be the origin of the portal after a Ouija board session. Often people have reported having experiences with haunted mirrors in hotels, friends slash relatives home, visiting a place as a tourist and so on. These areas usually, but not always, have a reputation for being haunted. The phenomena reported in connection with haunted mirrors are varied. The most common manifestation is the formation of images of people slash entities other than the people occupying the room. However, it should be remembered that natural distortions and curious light effects can create a number of bizarre effects. Added to this is the brain's phenomenal ability to create meaningful shapes and faces out of random patterns. But despite this, many of the reported cases of haunted mirrors were witnessed by more than one person at different times of the day, in various lighting conditions. Therefore, these cases may possibly rule out natural causes. Added to this, other forms of paranormal manifestations developed in addition to that connected with the mirror involved. Negative Entities, Energy and Mirrors The phenomena experienced by people are diverse. In most cases, but not all, the energy seems to be negative rather than benign. However, some of the apparent malevolence might be due to a fear factor, suggestion or misinterpretation rather than a negative spirit. Paranormal activity includes Shadow people. They have frequently been witnessed in connection with haunted mirrors. Witnesses describe not only shadow people standing near to mirrors, but also within the mirror and entering or leaving them. Quite a few cases also reported other phenomena at the same time such as, cold spots, voices, noises and orbs. Odors, ranging from pleasant to vile, have also been described. Strange mist. The mists are not only seen entering and leaving mirrors but sometimes form into more recognizable shapes, usually a humanoid one. Other people have described these mists evolving into dense, 
dark masses that move around the room as well as within mirrors. The feelings reported by the witnesses are usually of a negative nature. Anger, hostility and evil are some of the feelings experienced. In addition, people have given accounts of other phenomena happening at the same time, cold spots, orbs, glowing eyes, growls, voices and poltergeist activity. Faces this is probably by far the most frequent manifestation reported by people in association with haunted mirrors. The faces are, most of the time, human, and sometimes known to the witnesses. But there are a number of accounts where people have reported other entities slash demonic faces appearing. With this amount of paranormal activity associated with mirrors, it's not surprising that they have the reputation for being portals. But what exactly is a portal? Spirit portals are not a new concept and have been around for some time. At their most basic level, they are thought to be a form of entrance and exit point for spiritual energy and other dimensions. It has been claimed that portals have been captured on film, usually photographs. People who have allegedly seen a portal describe them as being similar to a whirlwind or alternatively, an elongated swirling shape. Here are some of the characteristics of a portal. A portal is thought to be a hole or a window in the energy fields that surround the spiritual realms or dimensions. Energy beings such as spirits can slip through these openings into the physical plane. Negative spirits frequently come through portals. This is believed to happen because the astral layer closest to the physical plane is an area where negative energy and entities reside. When a window opens up therefore, it's more likely for negative energy to pass through first. Most portals are believed to be a two-way pathway for both entering and leaving the physical level. Very high levels of paranormal activity are claimed to be found near portals. Many believe that portals are found all over the world and there may even be certain hot spots. Many believe that not only spiritual beings can use portals, but also beings and aliens from other dimensions. It is thought that there are special, but very rare, portals that are completely positive. No lower astrals or dimensional beings can enter these unless they are spiritually advanced. Some psychics and those who are developing their spirituality, claim that not only can they sense portals, but they can also close and open them up. It is thought by many that portals and vortices are the same thing. However many psychics and investigators believe they are different. That a vortex is simply a pure band of energy, neither negative nor positive and is not a doorway. It can however, be used for meditation and other spiritual work. Not all psychics and paranormal investigators believe that portals exist. Apart from mirrors, portals are thought to exist in areas of entry or exit within the physical realm. For example, Places such as doorways, windows and even cupboards and wardrobes are potentially portal areas. As with any paranormal phenomena it's difficult to know which cases are paranormal or natural phenomena creating weird effects. However, one thing is certain, mirrors will continue to play a part in psychic phenomena. Poltergeist. The phenomenon of poltergeist is generally believed to be connected to pubescent children. These youths are merely prey for the demons though, the young kids are not really acting at their own will. This period in a young person's life is, luckily enough, relatively short. When the affected person has grown up a bit and found out more about himself, the troubles usually stop. A grown-up person can be more severely attacked. A poltergeist, demon, is a separate life form and not the same thing as a ghost. When speaking about ghosts, people usually mean the spirits of deceased persons who somehow got stuck in the physical realm but wearing a body made of a lighter type of matter. The demons however, are not dead, 
they are simply constituted as amorphous beings, an existence very real but very hard to comprehend to any normal earthbound person. What is your name, the spirit who is here? I'm trying to connect to my father or grandfather, Otis Huff. Are you here? Are you here right now? I'm trying to connect to my father or grandfather, Otis Huff. Are you here? Are you here right now? Are you here right now? Dad, are you still with me? Otis Huff, was that you that said Huff? So right off the bat, right after I get home with the recorder, it proves itself to me. So did my meditation, my prayers, and the attempts to raise my vibrational level. I look forward to, for, to what is to come uh, from all of this. I look forward to working with some of you one-on-one. -on -one. Thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Love you all. Thank you. So I, I just have one more thing to add. The video is almost over, but don't expect to be seeing daily videos from me doing this. I still have my other work to do. But this was very encouraging. This was very amazing to me. That a little recorder, and there's never been any, any others like this, I just received direct replies to my questions when asking about my father. And while the second two were low volume, it's making me emotional because I miss my father. I'm sure many of you do too who've lost their parents. And just the fact that we could be able to hear them and the fact that I may be able to work with some of you and connect to your loved ones. That's amazing. That is absolutely mind-blowing to me.